Okay, so let's just get this sorted right off the bat. A National Geographic article estimates that a Tyrannosaurus Rex's top speed is about 12 miles an hour. Any faster, and its bones would have shattered. In 2013, a woman ran the 100 meter dash in heels in a record breaking 14.531 seconds, or about 15.4 miles an hour. So, while it may not be easy, it would be entirely feasible to outrun a T Rex in heels. So, all that fuss around Claire Deering doing it in Jurassic World. 100% plausible. The real question is, why are you driving so slow? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Theory Park. About a month or two ago, I asked you all on Instagram, at MattPatGT, by the way, whether you'd be interested in a Jurassic World theory, and overwhelmingly, you all said yes. So today, as an early Kwanzaa gift, we'll be sticking our noses into one of the most overlooked aspects of the movie, the plot. The whole thing seems pretty straightforward, right? InGen mixes a bunch of genes together to create the freak show of death known as the Irex, or should I say... Verizon Wireless presents the Indominus Rex. Ugh. Hashtag not spawn at all there, guys. It's like the emoji movie all over again. The Irex is too smart for them and escapes, only to have big dinos running around eating people for a second time time in any of these parks, and humanity still flocks to these death trap parks. It's a miracle that we don't lose the race for survival of the fittest. Then again, I guess a two-hour think piece on the ethics of dinosaur cloning legislation would be a terrible movie. Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, Jurassic United Nations. Anyway, while everyone else watching these movies loses their minds over whether the kids are going to become a velociraptor's amuse-bouche, I'm losing my mind over the science. Because while the Jurassic movies deal with some fascinating concepts like genetic splicing and cloning, in Jurassic World, it actually goes one step further. If you stop and analyze the science in the movie, you unearth a fascinating and completely undiscovered plotline that recontextualizes everything that you're watching unfold on screen. Because here's the truth, the Irex doesn't escape on its own. The whole thing was a setup. The dinosaur had help. Let's look at the way the Irex escape happens in the movie. During a routine checkup on the Indominus, the infrared cameras monitoring its pen reveal no heat signatures. This, coupled with claw marks against the walls, lead the team to think that the Indominus Rex has escaped. Despite the potentially huge security breach and the ability to call up the control room and check on the dino's tracker location in a matter of seconds, Chris Pratt decides to just saunter on into the pen, only to find out that, whoops, the Irex had hit its heat signature from the cameras and was still in there. You done got fooled! As the humans try to escape, they leave the door open for the Irex to escape, and in the process, set in motion the hilarious line of dominoes where by the end, practically every dinosaur is out gnawing on the bones of innocent tourists. And all they wanted to do was just educate themselves about the Mesozoic era. Now that all begs the question of how one dinosaur, genetically modified or no, was able to hide its heat signature from infrared cameras and lure its zookeepers into a death trap. Well, according to the beast's creator, Dr. Henry Wu, Henry Wu, well, according to the beast's creator, Dr. Henry Wu, the genetic cocktail that makes up the Irex gave the creature some really cool superpowers like the ability to cloak itself and the ability to alter its body heat. Cuttlefish genes were added to help her withstand an accelerated growth rate. Tree frogs can modulate their infrared output. We use strands from their DNA to adapt her to a tropical climate. In order for the Irex to evade both visual and infrared detection to trick its captors into the cage, it would have had to have used both those abilities at once. The problem is, that is scientifically impossible. Dr. Wu is absolutely right that cuttlefish can change the chromatophores on their skin to create a kind of camouflage. And honestly, it is super impressive. And he's also right that tree frogs can modulate their infrared output through their control of body heat. So for someone lightly versed in animal biology, this explanation totally holds up. But there's one huge problem here. The Irex could not use both abilities at the same time. You see, the way the tree frog regulates their body temperature is by changing colors. Darker colors tend to absorb more light, causing body heat to increase, while lighter colors reflect more light, cooling off the frog or, in this case, mutant dinosaur. That's all well and good if you don't care how visible you are, but if you're currently trying to camouflage yourself to match your surroundings and avoid visual detection, you don't also have the luxury of adjusting your body heat the same way a tree frog does. Dr. Wu is either just flat out wrong about the science the Irex is putting to use, or he's lying. Also, just because I know it's going to come up in the comments, the fact that everyone reminds us the Irex can... They say it can sense thermal radiation, like 
like snakes. Doesn't disprove anything. Yes, snakes can sense heat signatures. They practically have their own built-in thermal vision that they use while hunting, but that's not gonna do all that much to help a hybrid dino disappear from a bunch of surveillance cameras. The only way for the Irex to hatch this entire plan on its own is if one, it was able to sense the electromagnetic waves coming from the cameras in its pen, two, it had the knowledge those cameras were tracking its heat signature, three, it had figured out the exact range and sensitivity of those cameras, and four, it somehow was able to make the connection that those cameras were specifically being used by the humans to monitor it. Even if the Indominus had human DNA in its genetic cocktail to give it super intelligence, we know based on a backdoor in the Masrani blog, an additional site made by the movies supposedly written by the CEO of the park that you can hack into, it's actually a really cool idea that the movie developed in anticipation of the launch, that the CEO gave the orders to start development of the dinosaur in 2012. This movie takes place in 2015. At the absolute most, the Irex is three years old. No three-year-old, human or otherwise, is gonna be smart enough to concoct the Irex's plan. So what? Hollywood just dropped the ball on another series of scientific facts. That's nothing new. But in this case, I don't think it was a mistake at all. If you look closer, the evidence points to the cameras having been tampered with. By who? Well, the obvious choice is Vic Hoskins, head of InGen's security division. Throughout the movie, he repeatedly expresses his desire to give the Raptors a field test to prove that they could be effective weapons in war. Uh, what do you need, buddy? A field test. Look, nature gave us the most effective killing machines 75 million years ago. Oh, come on, gents. It's grown-up time. Only his request is repeatedly denied by the CEO of the company, who shows no signs of changing his mind despite all the years of work Hoskins has put into the program. I've been working for two years on an application for those raptors. They can hunt and kill that creature. Let me be as clear as I can. No velociraptors are going to be set loose on this island. It's only after the Irex escapes and the CEO dies trying to recapture it that Vic is able to take control of the park and finally get the field test he was demanding. He sabotages the system so the Irex can escape and he gets his field test when everyone else denied him. Everything lines up. Everything except for one line. He's surprised when the Irex escapes. Hey, yeah, it's me. We might have an opportunity here. So it may not have been Vic, but there was one other person involved with this conspiracy that also stands to benefit from the field test. The creator of the Irex and most of the other dinos in the park, the secret villain of the entire series, Dr. Henry Wu. At the end of the film, Hoskins begins revealing his plan, only to get himself rudely interrupted. <laughs> You should have had Henry breed in some etiquette there, Vic. But before he becomes just a meat fleck between some raptor teeth, he confirms that Dr. Wu wasn't working for Mizrani in the park, but rather InGen and its goal of developing dinosaurs as weapons. Dr. Wu, he works for us. Somebody's gotta make sure that this company has a future. In fact, as Wu evacuates the island in the InGen helicopter, we hear him specifically ask, Where's Hoskins? He's sending you and the assets to a secure location. But our deal is still intact! Don't worry, you'll be well taken care of. Dr. Wu clearly had a deal with Vic Hoskins tied to the Irex, but it's likely that that deal was contingent on proving the combat effectiveness of the dinosaur, and there was no way to do that while it was locked inside of its paddock. They had to find a way to release it. But why? Why would Wu want this chaos? Well, remember a recurring theme through the whole movie is that the park is quickly losing money. In the clip we just saw, Vic said how he's ensuring that the company has a future. The opening moments have the employee including Dr. Wu trying to win over potential investors. And in the first conversation with the park's owner, the CEO just completely brushes aside any financial concerns. Uh, enough about cost. Spend, expense. The company is going downhill and fast. While year over year revenue continues to climb, operating costs are higher than ever. Our shareholders have been patient, but let's be honest, no one's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. Dr. Wu sees himself as a scientific genius. All of this exists because of me. And from the secret website files, we learn that he received international fame the last time he created a genetic hybrid. And that was only him creating a plant. In short, Dr. Wu sees himself as a god. That's not me talking, that is literally the name of the book that he wrote. The next step, an evolution of God's concepts. But all that goes away if the company goes away. No more job equals no more research equals no more fame. He sees the writing on the wall. He sees investments in the amusement 
Logan Park down, costs rising, and the CEO being unconcerned about all of it. So he started to make alternate plans, a deal with Vic Hoskins and the higher-ups at InGen, to not only secure his own future, but more importantly, the future of his research. Except all of it hinged on a real-life test of the dinosaurs, a test that only happened because one of those dinosaurs found some miraculous, unbelievable way of escaping. Or maybe it was Wu himself making that miracle happen, helping to give the Indominus the little push it needed to escape. Which brings us all the way back around to the science. Remember, it's Dr. Wu who comes up with the false science behind how the Irex manages to escape. The man is a brilliant geneticist. If he knows that tree frogs can modulate their temperature, he knows that it depends on the frog's coloration. He knows that the Irex couldn't evade both types of cameras. Now look at how this moment is shot. Wu has his back to Mizrani. It's clearly a purposeful choice because in this moment, Dr. Wu is absolutely lying. He's the one who sabotaged the cameras, allowing the Indominus Rex to escape, proving that the scariest monster in Jurassic World is mankind itself. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. By the way, you know how animals are pretty much all either warm-blooded like mammals or cold-blooded like reptiles? Well, right now, scientists think that dinosaurs might be in the middle, slightly able to regulate their own body temperature. It's actually called mesothermic. Sea turtles, a few sharks can also do it, apparently. Anyway, I just thought it was a funny thing to bring up since it means that the Irex would just be able to modulate its body temperature naturally. None of this weird genetic splicing explanation necessary. Anyway, speaking of dinosaurs, take a big ol' bite out of that subscribe button where you can bet that I have more theories on the way as we get closer to the next Jurassic movie coming next year. And hey, if you want more dino analysis, well then check out my game theory on Jurassic World, where I examine whether you could actually clone a dinosaur from DNA extracted from amber. The answer is gonna surprise you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm starting to feel a little bit, uh, Jurassic, if you get what I'm saying, so I'm gonna lay down. Uh, hopefully I feel better for next week. See you then!